All right, welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to my uh, Dark Souls walkthrough. Um, this is going to be geared towards uh, beginners. I know there's a lot of guides up for Dark Souls already, um, but you know, I love the game so much. I kind of just wanted to do my own. Um, I came into the game kind of. Um, I played Demon Souls, you know, once, and uh, I didn't really give it a, the chance that I should have. So I came into this one without really. Um, you know any experience with with the series um, so this this guide's going to be geared towards more of that player um, and I'm going to give you some kind of like pointers for those just like starting out playing the series um, so now like I'm kind of doing the character creator um, so you definitely want to go to when you're creating your class at the beginning of the game it's kind of important but you know big picture not really you can kind of as you level up you put you know your souls towards leveling up different stat specific stats and depending on what stats you decide to level up that'll kind of dictate what class you are so I mean you can start out kind of like a barbarian you know warrior character and eventually just become the super powerful mage now I'm gonna go and make a deprived character because that, I, I've never played as one and that's kind of the um, you are, you have the best all-around stats at the beginning, and that's the best character class to use when you um, when you shape your character because you get the nice bump up on all the base stats compared to the other class selections. And um, yeah, so I want to make a barbarian. I'm probably going to try and go through again as like a melee class because yeah, that's that's how I always play these games, just you know melee. And um, I I find that it's more fun in Dark Souls to do melee. Um, but for beginners, magic is definitely the way to go because you can kind of just stand back and launch your spells and kind of um, you know pick away from a distance. Yes, indeed. The dark sign brands the undead. And in this land, the undead are corralled and led to the north. Where they are locked away to await the end of the world. This Yeah, I'm not gonna try and like talk during some of like the dialogue and cutscenes. I'm gonna try and like limit that. But um, you know, while a lot of people say like Dark Souls doesn't really have a story, I, I kind of think it does. Um, you just have to kind of dig for it. It it tells you kind of what you need to do, and uh, it doesn't really tell you ultimately why you're doing what you're doing. It, it kind of does, but it kind of doesn't. You really need to read like item descriptions and um, talk to the NPCs multiple multiple times to get more out of like the lore and kind of the backstory of what you're what you're doing. Now Dark Souls like on YouTube has a lot of um, community uh, has a bit, pretty big lore community behind it. They definitely have a lot of nice um, users and stuff making videos geared towards that. Uh, Epic Namebro, he has the best one. Like he has like just lore. He has like a whole series based on lore, and I'd recommend checking all his Dark Souls videos out. He's kind of I I, I kind of learned how to play the game watching his stuff. So he's you know very entertaining so I very definitely recommend you go check them out but um th this is kind of just like the tutorial area uh, read all the messages be sure and do that I'm kind of skipping over that because I've I've beaten the game four times on one character I, I, I know how to play so I'm just kind of skipping all of them but it tells you basic your basic controls and how you do and do things so but after that it's just like you know go have at it learn the game which I thought you know, very different and kind of refreshing compared to other games that are out there, which is, which have, you know, basically like hand-holding, you know, just kind of a quick shot of the first, I guess, quote-unquote boss you fight in the game. Yeah, first time I played through that scared the bejeebies out of me. 
the giant dragon man falling down, dragon demon or whatever. Still kind of getting used to the controls. It's been a while since I've played. After I, I got all the all thousand achievement points on it, I kind of just had to take a break from it because I, I played it pretty hardcore for a while and uh, kind of wanted to get back in and play again. So I'm just kind of familiarizing myself with the controls. I, I do try and get some parries in, but uh, I fail miserably, and you can laugh and 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 heckle me as I try to do so. Which, as a melee character, really try. I'd recommend trying to get the the parry timing down. It really helps out, especially if you're when you're doing like soul grinding, because you get more souls when you kill with either backstab or parry moves versus just regularly killing enemies. Backstabs are a lot easier to get. You'll basically you'll see me get a couple in this video. Basically, just walk around to the back of your the, whoever you're fighting, and um, with your shield down, not up, you hit your light attack button, either your L or your either your R1 or your right bumper, and you'll do this like critical hit animation. It looks pretty sweet and it does a ton of damage. You also want to make sure you roll off of that side there. There's a giant ball that rolls down at you. Balls in your face is never good. So I was kind of thinking as I was playing through this, I was going to make just like a barbarian character, just play with a loincloth the entire time, you. And upgrade my club and plank you shield. I don't really I'm done for seeing that be friend. too fun though I'm later on in the game as you get towards some of the you know, yeah, more difficult sad. enemies. I wish to ask something of you. Yeah, a, a few tips too you for uh, beginners. Um, Hear me out, you? I, you can play online, and it's, it's really fun I'm to do so. For the beginning of the game, I probably wouldn't recommend it, but just because you have the, the chance of being invaded no in the game, family. which is very intense and really fun, but shows. when you know you don't really know what you're doing, it's, it's kind of a pain in the ass. Make it to the uh, you can, uh, one benefit to playing online is you have the ability to summon other players into your game to help you, but I would recommend still, just probably not for a little bit, go and try and discover the game on your own. It's a lot more satisfying yeah, that way. Even fighting the bosses, try fighting them on your own a few times, so you can, an undead favorite. you know, if you if you're able to beat them by yourself, very satisfying. It's yeah. awesome. I, as I'm playing through the game, though, I'm going to summon NPCs in no, because I'm I really like, especially Solaire. I really death. like his character in the game, oh, and to keep having interaction with him throughout the game, you need to constantly summon him into the boss fights that he's eligible to be summoned into. But yeah, you don't have to be online to summon the NPCs though, which is nice. If you're having trouble with a particular boss, there is a chance that you can summon an NPC. I think more often than not, you have the ability to do so. And it definitely helps out quite a bit in boss fights. Especially, there are some boss fights where it's two enemies versus you. And yeah, another, even a computer controlled character helps out immensely. But here's a backstab. Hmm, that's nice. That's very nice. My Xbox Connect picked up on my voice and started doing something weird, so I'm just going to turn that off. Yeah, you hear me just totally failing on pairing, so I'm just going to screw it. I'm just going to beat him. So. Alright, I'm Another good thing, too, about being... Um, well, basically, to play online, you basically need to be in human form, which requires you to uh, use humanity that you've acquired at bonfires to restore humanity, at that point you become human, which then allows human characters to invade or you summon them into your uh, game to help. But another benefit to being human is that you um, you can kindle bonfires and giving you more Estus flasks at bonfires. So here when you come back in, make sure you fall down and hit your right bumper or R1 attack. And you'll just slam down on him and take a huge chunk of his life off. At that point, this this is a pretty easy fight, so just kind of go around. If you have a shield, I didn't, for some reason, didn't think of this until like near the end. But just two-hand it, which is either the triangle or Y button on your PS3 or 360 controller. Is the shield really doesn't? On big enemies like this, the shield doesn't really doesn't really matter. 
you need that extra damage more than you need the, uh, you know, lack of defense that the shield will provide. So, uh, just two-hand it and just go in and just, you know, beat the hell out of them. I was kind of, yes, yeah, I'm still trying to get the rolling timing down. Is the, when you do your roll animation, you have a bit of uh, invincibility. So yeah, he's, he's easy. Yeah, no problems. You, you know, first time you, you might, you might lose him. No worries. He's, you'll beat him. Just, just have patience. That's the thing with this game. Be patient. That's the biggest tip that I can give you in this game is just be patient. Don't hurry through areas, especially areas you're not familiar with, because you will die. Like, you will get bombarded with enemies, even like normal zombie enemies that are normally easy. When there's just one or two, you can find yourself being surrounded by five of them and just getting destroyed. Whereas if you just kind of go slowly with your shield up, you'll uh, you'll come out alive and it'll be less frustrating. Adds a little bit more intensity to it too, I find. I, I find it more, uh, kind of more nerve-wracking, more engrossing to kind of just legends, give all your attention into the game as you're going through and just kind of exploring every little thing. Birdie, birdie. To leave the undead asylum in pilgrimage to the land of the ancient lords. Lordra. Alright, so now you're basically the giant raven's going to take you to Firelink Shrine, which acts, I know in the uh, in Demon Souls you have like the hub or whatever. I mean, th this is pretty much the hub for Dark Souls. You'll find yourself coming back here quite often, and it's kind of like the, the middle link to the rest of the worlds in the game. But you'll see a lot of the different NPCs in the game too, that eventually as you encounter throughout the game, they find their way back here to either just, you know, give you more story tidbits or sell you stuff. So we're going to end the video here, um, we're probably going to continue on soon, just kind of exploring the first little area a little bit. Uh, well actually we'll go talk to this guy first. Um, he's pretty much useless in the game, as far he doesn't really give you anything, he just gives you kind of advice on where you, cryptic advice on kind of where you need to go. Gives you a little bit of story here and there, but another thing too what I'm doing is I'm, I'm talking to him over and over again. So you'll want to do that with most of the characters you find in the game. It'll lead to like extra, like free items, or they'll open up their you know repertoire of spells to you that they'll sell you, or you know even just their shop, which is you know very nice in this game. So um, yeah, just talk to characters multiple multiple times, just like you know kind of old school RPGs where you talk to characters several times the enemy, and they'll give you stuff. This guy's kind of an asshole though. You can, and the quickest way, although I come most of the <laughs> most of the characters you meet in Dark Souls are assholes. Don't you find a few people that are good, but most people have like oh, kind of so, well, you know cruel intentions and ulterior motives to, to why they're helping you the if they help you at all. The other band is back down within the place, but I die again. <laughs> Bloody you! That's pretty much it. All right, that's it for this video. We'll uh, please uh, watch the next one I'm gonna put up. I'll be putting that one up soon. Thanks for watching.